Seraphim 17 once again. This is my Battlefield 4 hard difficulty video walkthrough. This is Singapore. That's another fucking firework. I do apologize. Nothing I can do. It's bonfire night and I need to do this commentary. So I'm in a tank and in the last video I said I wasn't going to be in a tank at this point. So that's my bad. But here we are anyhow. There's going to be some more tank warfare. The only problem here is it's really difficult to see your enemy thanks to the weather conditions. You know, monsoon and all that good stuff. And this is a pretty long level coming up, there's, there's quite a lot in it, and the, it's the end section that, that makes this so long, and I'm going to apologise in advance for the end section, guys, because I put a sniper rifle on when I realised that my gun didn't have the range to kill the people in any kind of concise manner. So I thought, put a sniper rifle on, punish them that way, and the way the sniper rifle works on this game is, is a lot... is really different to Bad Company 2. And I've already mentioned Bad Company 2 a little bit, but I was a really good sniper on that game. And I know everybody who ever tells you stories of them being a sniper in a game thinks that they were an awesome sniper in that game. But I actually was, as opposed to just talking out my ass. And I, I had a lot of experience with it, because I was the counter sniper to all the snipers. And if anybody ever played that game, everybody sniped. It was filled with them. But the problem is only a very small percentage of people did it competently so whereas I would you know for instance if there was a ton of snipers on my team I'd pick a medic or something I'd do a different class you know I'd I'd mine the roads as the engineer and then cover the MCOMs or something but what would happen is if I would get sniped or if I would notice that there was a lot of snipers and there wasn't too much action coming into the bases I would go back to my class which was a sniper class my recon class and what I would do is because I knew all the best sniper spots and all the places where I had the most success, I knew exactly where to look. But at the same time, a lot of people are really bad at situational awareness and where they decide to stand. So I also knew where the shit people would stand. So counter sniping bad snipers became some of the most fun that I had in that game. Because I didn't even have to look through my scope and you know keep on bashing Mark to see if I could get an orange triangle to pop up so I knew where people were. I just looked to the ridges where they all were and all you could see were foreheads. Lines of foreheads miles away and they're trying to aim at people. And then it was just the case of calculating the distance with the weapon. My weapon of choice was the, is it the SV, SV-98 or something. It's a Russian rifle. The scope had um, upward arrows for the distance and it was my favourite scope because I, I had that shit down. And I, I just used to have a, a ton of fun with it. And even talking about it, I'm getting excited to try this multiplayer, but I get the feeling that this it's not going to be the same. And it was the same feeling I had in Battlefield 3, where I was really excited to play, and then when I did play, I didn't like it at all. Like, I tried running around as infantry, and I didn't enjoy it at all. Tried the sniper class, and this, they, they just nerfed the recon class completely. But I'm being optimistic, and hopefully I should have a good time with it. Because I want to get into Battlefield again. Because I had so much fun in Bad Company too, And I don't think anything really compares to just the madness that you see in these games. And it's something I would really like to keep on the channel and cover quite a regular basis. Because anybody who's been with me a while knows I've kind of dropped off first person shooters at the moment. I have no ambition to play Call of Duty. I have no ambition to, to shoot people online. I just don't. It's, it's left me at this moment. And I would like to change that. But at the same time, I, I want to keep doing new things and interesting things. And Battlefield could be one of those things. So I am excited for it. But there's been a transition there, guys, because there's a lot of exposition on this level. A lot of talking, a lot of bullshit, a lot of waiting. And uh, when you get to this bus, there's a, a ton of dudes coming your way. So take them out however you wish to do so. I'm going to toss some grenades and then start shooting them with my trusty M4. Which... If you're wondering why I'm using the M4, it's because it's got iron sights, and I was trying to see what the iron sights were, but for some reason in the campaign, every gun has a fucking lollipop on it, every gun has some ridiculous attachment it doesn't need, and you can't seem to take them off. But I, I remedied that in the testing grounds, which, if you don't know what that is, it's, it's essentially a place in the multiplayer where you can do anything. There's targets set up, there's vehicles everywhere, you can access all the weapons, all the attachments, and you can essentially get a bit of a head start without being smashed by people in choppers or snipers or running gunners. It's a, 
an area where you can acclimatize to the controls and to how things work. And the only downside of it I've seen, which I haven't noticed if you can change this yet, is that you can't pick the levels from the gate from the multiplayer to do it in. Because what I would like to do is, is familiarize myself with the levels. And that's the one thing I like the most about combat training on, on Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 1, is before I ever even touched the multiplayer, I would play a few rounds on every single level on on combat training against the bots because there there's no pressure there's no you know super tough uh, ridiculously good players or or people on your team not hitting objectives or people not helping the team or a bunch of snipers doing spinning around ladder stall douchebaggery so I can learn where all the capture points are I can learn where the flow of traffic's gonna be where the choke points are you know how the level works so that when I do go online I'm not just running into my death repeatedly and not having any fun and that's a thing that I like to, to do because it keeps me prepared and it, it means I have more fun. And I would like to do it on this just so I can know where the MCOT state, or the M, I don't even know what the MCOM, I think they're called. I don't know why they're called that. But where those rush stations are and, you know, just, just an understanding of the spawns and things. But it doesn't really let you. So what I did instead was I, I chose every gun on the game and I looked at its iron sights, as sad as that might sound to some folks just to see which ones I would like and which ones I want to look towards because it can be that simple for me it can be the best gun in the world but if its iron sights are ugly I'll not use it I'll probably throw a sight on it and as I've mentioned in this this guide so far I'm really fussy about the sights that I like and it's it's something I can't change unfortunately if I get a weapon and its sight offends me I can't use it <laughs> and it sounds so petty and stupid and it is I just can't help it. But this is my box on my first playthrough. As you can see, I've got a couple of different weapons to choose from. But look at them all. Times one, RDS, red dot sight. Times one, red dot sight. Times one, they're all the fucking same. They've all got shit on them. Every one of them. Heavy barrel, magnifier. Like, why? I don't get it. Why does everything have to have a ton of stuff? Like, I like that sight. That, look, that sight's nice. That's a good sight. I will probably put that on the good guns that have shit iron sights. Because that looks like Call of Duty 4's aimer. Which is one of my favourite red dots. But here we're moving into the hangar. This first one... Because this is my first time getting exposed to it, I'm thinking, can I stealth this area? Is there a way I can possibly push through without them seeing me? And I don't think you can. I think the game is designed for shit to kick off because there's far too many explosive barrels for it not. Which in this room is not too bad because it's it's quite a fun room, it's quite a cool room. But in the next one it's it's huge. And there's an achievement on this level, slash trophy, for killing 15 people with RPGs. And the RPG is a piece of shit in this game, it truly is. You can fire it at somebody, hit them in the ankle and they'll still live. It doesn't make any sense. But the cool thing is, on the next area, there is a another firework. There's a box that refills your ammo, so you can just kill people with the RPG. There's a ton of people in the room. Refill your ammo. Keep refilling your your five RPGs, and you can just repeat that and rinse that until you've you've got your achievement. But one thing I did notice on this campaign quite a lot is, is when I started getting tagged and I would try and go into cover and lay down, there would always be somebody who could see me. Like right now, I don't know if you can see him, but next to that jet there's a person who was shooting me. I've moved now so you can't see him, but he was just to the right of me off in the distance. But I just didn't see him and I didn't click on. And I ended up taking a bunch of shots, which I shouldn't have, but... Because this weapon is a carbine that I'm using, it suffers at, at mid to long range. It's more of a, a mid-range weapon. So you definitely see the damage drop off at distance, which is a shame because I was really enjoying this gun. And you can only get access to certain weapons in this campaign by beating the scores and by finding them. And some of the weapons are really well hidden. In fact, there's one on this level, on the, the bit we've already done, part one. You know the, the multi-story car park I was on? If you climb on top of the wall on that car park and like walk across to the next building and follow that all the way around, there's a little lip with a gun on it. And I just, oh, who the fuck put that there? Like, who is doing this kind of shit so that we have to try and find it in these really obscure places? 
But once again, I've got in front of the scripting, I've got in front of the team, so you have to wait for them to come over and open a door that this man apparently has no way of opening on his own. Which, the guy can kill a million dudes, you know, like it was nothing, because he's a super soldier in the hands of the a gifted player, or of any player, yet he can't open a door. But this is the big, the big hanger and the big shootout, which... He's going to be as frustrating for you to watch as it was for me to play, so I apologise in advance. But the hit detection on the sniper rifle and the bullet drop at distance just doesn't seem to be anything like Bad Company 2. Which is a shame, because I really liked the fact that you had to know how to use the weapon to use it well. Like, you and a sniper in a, in a distance fight, the first person to get their calculations right was one of the most fun adrenaline pumping moments of any first person shooter I've ever played and it looks like on this game that that's not going to be the case at all but I don't know so fingers crossed it'll it'll be just like that but as you can see I'm doing a little bit of stealthing hoping I can get through this sequence without everything kicking off scanning and targeting as many people as I can there's a lot of dudes in this room and when I get to this corner I kind of accept that it probably wants me to fight because there's just two many people and thus I'm probably gonna stab this guy and I'm gonna shoot those two guys up there and then we're gonna go from there so this game utilizes a tilt which I've not mentioned the first time I came across a tilt in a first-person shooter was the original fear and it worked really well because you controlled it directly it was awkward until you learnt it, but it, it definitely helped because it made you a much smaller target. This game does it context sensitively. And I believe Call of Duty Ghost does as well because there's this big notion of tilting. But this is the distance. And I'm using, is it a personal defence weapon or a submachine gun? I'm not too sure what this weapon is, but at this range, it suffers. Because I shot that guy how many times? Five times? And he didn't die. So... I kill all the people close to me pretty competently and then the people at a distance instead of crossing the ground to get to them and kill them which would have been smarter I decide to do some experimenting with the sniper rifle and it just doesn't really pay off but like look I can't oh he probably hid behind something that dude but this this is a distance that my guns just will not wall bang or, or do too much at like look at this that, that guy is there you see that I'm on his face there's a dude so I was like, fuck you, dude, this is bullshit. I assume there's a piece of geometry stopping him from being shot, but whatever it was, it wasn't cool. But that is unfortunately the story of this battlefield. Sometimes your bullets just do what they want. Like, look at that, it's bang on him. Bang on him! And you can tell when I get frustrated when I'm shooting somebody, because I, I tap faster. I just da -da 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 get really mad, like, God, don't fucking die. And sometimes it works, sometimes you just miss more. It's it's a very strange balance. But look at this, at this range, you know, there's just no point in even trying with these guns. And there's quite a lot of people, so I, I'm not too sure if this is the moment where I think I'll go back and start playing with some of the other guns. But there's a ton of dudes that spawn just on the far side of this room. I think he back, I should have probably recorded this room, but... You know, my guides are as honest as I can make them. I will tell you if it's, you know, what happened. And for the most, every single video that you see is the first victory uh, of the attempted guide. Which I think is, is definitely one of the best ways to deal with it. Because a lot of people have this fascination with perfect runs. And perfect runs are great, and sometimes I do enjoy to strive for that kind of thing. But... I think they can really ostracize certain people. Certain people don't want to see a perfect run. There are a lot of people that don't like them just because it's something that they themselves could never do. And I think it can be a little intimidating and a little bit off-putting to a player who's struggling to watch somebody do something that essentially just looks fake and godlike. So I like fallibility. I like the fact that mistakes are present in, in my guides and there are moments where I get lit up and I get close to death and stuff. Because I think it keeps it honest. Oh, this is so frustrating. Come on, Chris, just go and get this over with. So, yeah, this is me accepting that this distance is a little bit longer than is functional. So, I think sniper time. Let's have a see what this rifle's like. 
And the, the first rifle that you find, or that you unlock in the campaign, to my knowledge, is the Scout Elite. And it seems like a pretty cool sniper. Ah, so, I don't know if you've noticed this, but... <laughs> My teammate, the Chinese girl, I don't know her name, this is what she's doing. This entire room full of dudes, she stood up here not even shooting. So, yeah, fantastic AI there on your teammates. But there's the DMRs, which I didn't choose. I chose the sniper rifle. And this is it. This is me using the sniper rifle. So it doesn't have the biggest zoom. I try and see if it goes through the, the cover. It doesn't. So, I should really lay it down. Doesn't go through that cover either. Doesn't even hit him. <laughs> Just amazing. And at that distance, it looked like there were a little bit of drop on that bullet, so you would have to aim a little bit higher. But as you're going to see here, it just... That time it didn't. That time was bang on. Like, really strange. I just... I did not have a lot of fun with this rifle at this point. But it was the first time I tried to snipe, so maybe it's it's just me being shitty. The AI doing those little preset moves where they move back and forth between cover and you miss them. It's like, come on, dude, just stay still. And, yeah, not fun. So I've been thinking too, which is probably something I'm going to cover in a video. Guides don't really do that well on on YouTube. You know, games are getting easier. We've already had the, the difficulty debate so far, the, the discussion about games getting easier, you know, the firework. Games are continuing to get easier and will continue to get easier. Excuse me. So the, the prevalence of walkthroughs and guides, I don't think is anywhere as high as it used to be. I think it's probably going to just continue to diminish and just get worse and worse. Especially if this game is any indi indicator, because this is one of the more easy... Actually, this is probably the easiest project I've taken. It's the easiest one I've done this year. And it, that's not just because it took, I think, four hours to record, but it's just how little I died. And I'm so sorry about this here, guys. Just I don't know why I was being so stubborn with the rifle. You know, Not really the time and the place, but I'm just experimenting with different things. So I've, I've put on this, this Bunker Buster, the XM29, or whatever it's called. And I'm seeing how it works. Does it work like a noob tube or does it work like a directional shot? And I think it's a directional one. I just don't really understand it too much. But yeah, this is just me messing around, essentially. Not the proudest moment of the guide, but it's in it nonetheless. But walkthroughs definitely have suffered. And it seems like playthroughs are the way to go or are the, the, the smarter way to do it and I actually think that playthroughs are easier, I do it doesn't matter what difficulty they're on, I just think the way that you do the setup to do playthroughs makes them intrinsically easier than walkthroughs even with live commentary which admittedly I think is tougher to do at first but in the long run it saves so much time because when you're doing a, a walkthrough the way I do it I record the game I edit the game and then I apply the commentary. A lot of people that do playthroughs will commentate while they're capturing. So you're doing two things at the same time, which completely cuts out that third phase of my production schedule, which is a really inviting proposition at times. And I'm currently in a position where I'm I'm thinking of things to do to to just keep the channel moving forward and to just to keep it evolving. I'm, I'm always looking for something interesting, something different, something fun. And I've been playing around with the idea of, of moving away from guides. I don't know if this is just, you know, a whimsy of mine at this moment in time, but I've made nearly a hundred walkthroughs at this point. And this is not me saying that I don't enjoy doing it anymore or that I don't intend to do it anymore. I'm just curious of how many people... <laughs> That's me getting a little bit silly with that guy. Like the fact I do guides. Because I'm probably going to do a video 
uh, addressing to see where the consensus on the channel is as of, of playthrough versus guides and what are people's feelings about them. Because they are different, but they can form the same bond. Like, I would still do them on the hardest difficulty. You know, I would still probably edit them to an extent, whereas I would show you a couple of deaths, but at the same time, if I died 50 times, you're obviously not going to see all that. And I thought the, ch the waypoint here was the van. So I'm like, what the fuck's happening? I'm in the van and nothing's happening. And it turns out it's the door behind the van. <laughs> so I turned the van around, like an idiot, not doing anything of use. And then I realised what it wants me to do. But I'm just, I'm just curious. And it all comes from the fact that games are, are getting easier, guys. They are. So this notion of me guiding you through games might not be something that lasts. Because it might not be something that's necessary. And... You know, instead of being the guide, I could just be, you know, the journey. And you can get my reactions and my responses to it, which is something that a lot of people like and a lot of people have asked for. And it's something I'm already doing in, in different projects. You know, I did a, a live playthrough of Saints Row the Third. I'm doing a live playthrough of Final Fantasy VIII. And they're, they're enjoyable. They're really enjoyable. But the guides take precedence, so that's why you're seeing this before you're seeing that. But just food for thought, guys. This is the fireworks ruined the fucking audio balance on this. Thank you for watching. You take care now.